So what we're looking at here is uh, year one of catching the snow melt with 2,000 feet of swales, and key line swales, and key lines. Uh, we have a very interesting spring going on here where five days ago it was 25 degrees below zero and today it's 62. That's a turnaround of almost 90 degrees in five days. So as you look around here, this whole thing was completely under snowpack just five days ago before the temperature went up 90 degrees. <clears throat> this is why you put swales in for uh, dramatic swings in temperature and rainstorms because <clears throat> you want to catch water. Uh, here what we're seeing is we need to bring this berm up just a bit in through this area here so the berm is kind of level with the driveway here. Uh, that means we'll dig a little pocket pond behind here and uh, pile it up in the berm. You can see this is running down to a low area here where we're at least not losing this water but we want to redistribute it a little bit better. So this here is just a swale so it follows a contour line. Uh, its purpose is not necessarily to move water from one area to another as much as it is just to catch water. The water that it's catching is from this hilltop here and uh, this is where we pasture animals, chickens, and steers. So along the berm last summer we planted a hundred hazelnuts and uh, we're going to Put some other uh, trees in here, <clears throat> uh, maybe some uh, fruit trees, certainly some nut trees, maybe oaks. Uh, we want to get shade going along the soil here because like I said this is pasture and we're turning it into solo pasture by planting trees into it. So where the snow is still in the trench, <clears throat> lots of water underneath the trench. Uh, back in this area here, going, it gets quite a bit more interesting. <clears throat> right up this corner here. Now, look down this way where the barns are you can see a swale coming in <clears throat> from the uh, from a it's actually a culvert that empties that whole field across the road uh, into kind of a catchment area on this side so this water that you're seeing here is coming from, I want to say about 30 acres of uh, CRP across the road that used to just go through a culvert down the ditch and now we diverted it into this swale here uh, with a spillover right here which is meant to just flow gently across this <clears throat> road area into the next series of swales. And here's where it gets caught here and sent off to the right and to the left. It used to just go in a straight line right down this valley <clears throat> where you can see another swale further down and then out the back corner uh, into the swamp. So what we are doing with this 
series of swales is moving a lot of water from wet areas into dry areas along hillsides. <clears throat> Here you can see we're in a pasture area. We had this stockpiled with grass last winter. So the steers, there they are, have been in here. And as you notice, there's just shit everywhere. And that's because we've been moving their small square hay bales around the pasture here as much as we can to distribute pee everywhere. Put a little pocket pond in the end here, which basically just means digging a shallow two to three foot pond uh, and piling the berm up a little bit more. A uh, lot of water, a lot of water that used to just run off into the swamp. Uh, here they are doing their thing, and uh, very glad that it's finally warmed up some. Now, this water here. Whale down below, which is redistributed in, in, in another direction. So we're really not using this at all. We're just moving it, the overflow from the upper paddock to this lower paddock along here. So We've got, like I said, about 2,000 feet of swales put in here. Uh, we dug them in two, two uh, falls ago. Uh, did some hand adjusting and some machine adjusting on them last summer. Uh, got the flow going a little bit better. But this is the first time we've had like the whole thing completely full to the brim with snow melt. So it's given us a few more tips as to uh, adjustments we need to make. <clears throat> Again along the along the uh, berm uh, we'll be planting woody perennials, both fruit and nut trees and shrubs. Uh, you can see way down in this corner here used to be a huge uh, slushy, a two foot deep slushy of snow and water in the spring. And we've diverted so much water that didn't happen this year. So uh, I'm going to take a final look at the lower swale here. So you can see where race through this valley into the back corner and out into the uh, there's a wetland in the swamp that gets actually fed from a, a different area so now we're capturing this water redistributing it and we'll be planting uh, woody perennials along the berm. Uh, here's again the upper berm uh, Lots of water in this one here too, uh, but as as you'll see, we've got kind of a low area here where we need to put in like a finger pond and build up the berm just a little bit more, and then off to this side here, things are looking pretty good. We have. A little bit of of uh, overflow right here, but again, this is getting caught by the uh, bottom swell. Here, 
Let's see, there's two feet of water behind this. Uh, unfortunately, because it's completely frozen solid, uh, the berm isn't blowing out. It's uh, it's just slowing everything down. So there you go. Uh, dramatic shifts in the weather call for uh, dramatic attempts to retain water. And uh, this baby here is uh, doing its job. We got to tweak it just a little bit more. And uh, we've got a lot of, of uh, trees and shrubs ordered to uh, plant when spring really breaks. So there you go. Uh, this is how you put in swales and key line swales. Again, this is not uh, an attempt to prevent erosion. This is an attempt to capture water and redistribute it from wet areas into dry areas to take advantage of. Soak it into the ground and plant uh, perennials that can use the water. All right, we're pretty charged up about this whole thing. It's looking terrific. So uh, any questions, uh, get in touch. And uh, that's it for now.